Gabrielle Kelly, thanks so much for joining us today and introducing us to the whole world of wellbeing and resilience. First of all, when we talk about these terms, wellbeing and resilience, can you give us an understanding of what you mean by those two terms? We've deliberately used the language of both wellbeing and resilience because people have very different understandings of those words. For some people, the wellbeing language is really soft and uh, gym-like, gym and for other people, the resilience language has a whole other another meaning. We were interested in the combined meaning, if you like, to cover for well-being, a sense of life satisfaction, a sense of generalised happiness, but I don't mean Pollyanna happiness, I mean a general sense of happiness in life. And in the resilience aspect, we think resilience is really important in life because life delivers challenges. It normally delivers challenges. So you need resilience to be able to persist through challenges, to recover after some difficult event, and as importantly, to be able to seize opportunity when it walks past you. So that. That's the reason why we chose the language of well-being and resilience, and we think all of those concepts are important. Let's go back to the beginning. When was the Wellbeing and Resilience Centre established and why? We launched the Wellbeing and Resilience Centre inside the Mind and Brain theme at Samri two years ago now in 2015. It was the direct result of the Professor Martin Seligman Thinkers in Residence visit to South Australia in 2012 and 13. So he came to propose to South Australians that the science of positive psychology could be useful for both reducing the amount of mental illness and improving mental health. It's like he introduced that idea here in the very early days of positive psychology science, in a sense, and he tested that concept with our uh, professions, teaching, psychologists, psychiatrists, our political leaders and the community. He saw about 14,000 people during the time he was in Adelaide and he left with a recommendation to the Premier that South Australia could become a state of wellbeing, could become one of the first places in the world to both measure and build wellbeing at scale. And overwhelmingly there was a great deal of interest in that concept, which is why we've gone ahead, taken that idea, launched the Wellbeing and Resilience Centre, and this is the work we're doing, building and measuring wellbeing across the whole population. Fast forward to 2017, I'm not sure if the objectives of the centre have changed, but where are you at moving forward with what you're wanting to achieve here? We're making a great deal of progress in this scale, broad scale approach to building wellbeing. We're being recognised worldwide as leaders in that attempt to build the wellbeing of a whole society. We take a life course approach, so we're interested in the wellbeing and resilience of everyone from zero to death. And we're doing a huge amount of work with older South Australians, with the Department for Education and Child Development in schools and the other education systems. We're working with manufacturers. We're working with the prison, the whole of the prison system, beginning with the workforce project for the prison officers. And we're basically working, also working with TAFE SA. So we are reaching deeply and broadly into the community, offering people the latest science in how to be well and how to be resilient in life, but also offering the chance for people to be measured in wellbeing and resilience for two reasons, one or three reasons really. One reason is that if people are measured as individuals and they get a sense of what their own relative wellbeing is and they get offered the information about how to improve it, that's good for them. It's like a tool set for individual wellbeing. But if you measure the well-being of a whole workforce, say a whole school or a whole prison system or a whole local government workforce, it gives that whole workforce the, the opportunity to use that baseline measurement to grow from. And then when anyone invests or goes to the trouble of intervening to build well-being and resilience, in a year's time when you measure again, you know whether it's worked or not. Professor Seligman was really clear that people have been building well-being in a variety of ways really for a long time. The science of psychology is well established and much is understood about how to build well-being. It's just that well-being wasn't measured very well. So we have selected one of the measures, actually it was Professor Seligman's dashboard of well-being, PERMA. PERMA stands for positive emotion, engagement, relationships, meaning and accomplishment. That's called PERMA. We've added plus, plus physical activity, nutrition, sleep and and realistic optimism. We've decided that if you build PERMA Plus, you definitely are going to build your well-being and build your resilience. And that's based on the latest science of what does increase well-being and resilience. We could have used any other any other of a number of other dashboards of well-being. There are some very good ones in the world, but this one covers about 80% 
of the elements that have been measured in other measures and we think it's a, a very good measure. So we're very happy with it. We would like to see PERMA Plus understood by everyone in our society, just like everyone understands slip, slop, slap. So if you think about it, slip, slop, slap carries a message of health promotion about avoiding skin cancer. We think PERMA Plus carries a similar version of how do you avoid mental illness or more importantly, how do you build mental health? Well, you do it by looking after your PERMA Plus, positive emotion, engagement, relationships, meaning and accomplishment, physical activity, nutrition, sleep and optimism. The City of Adelaide's current strategic plan uh, is based around four themes, one of which is livability. Can you tell us how improving the well-being and resilience of a community can actually help us achieve that goal of having a stronger community? We're really thrilled to be working with the Adelaide City Council in a number of different ways, but specifically around this question of well-being and resilience. When Martin Seligman spoke to the Premier about this idea of building the state of well-being, the Premier stopped and reflected and said, you know, South Australians really, we're really proud of how livable we are here. It's not a big step from livability to well-being, is what the Premier said three years ago before we advanced this agenda. And I think that he was really accurate there. I think we are proud of being in a livable city. We're proud of our lifestyle. We're proud of the safety of the communities generally. We're proud that there's a good understanding about general levels of health, etc. And, and I think the Wellbeing and Resilience Project has a great deal to offer to the Adelaide City Council's agenda for livability. If you think about it, Livability is more than safety and it it's also connects to what kind of a community you have. How do you participate in community? If you're surrounded by a whole community who have really taken seriously the question of does my life have meaning, then that changes the fabric of the community that you're in. If your community's taken an interest in what's my level of achievement for my life, and I don't mean being rich and famous, I mean achievement as a human being against your own personal goals for your life. If there are more people around you in community concerned with a sense of achievement, that's a different kind of community and a different addition to livability, I think, than simply livability and safety in the streets. So by raising the PERMA plus of a community, improving the physical health, improving the mental health, improving the optimism, improving the levels of positive emotion, you're really adding another whole band of possibility onto the, onto the notion of livability. The City of Adelaide has begun building on the data drawn from the PERMA Plus survey last year. Broadly speaking though, what can individuals themselves do to improve and build upon their own wellbeing and resilience and help others in the community? There's a lot that individuals can do to build their well-being. The science of psychology has been well developed for over a hundred, probably more years, maybe even thousands, going back to the beginning. And it knows a lot about treating mental illness. It actually knows a lot about building mental health. And positive psychology emerged out of that really big, important tradition of knowledge. So the knowledge has been available and has been applied to treat mental illness. It just hasn't been pivoted towards building mental health until recently under the sort of influence of the positive psychology movement. So there's a lot that people can do to build their own resilience, to build their, to build their emotional uh, un understanding of themselves, to build their self-awareness, to build their understanding of what values drive them in their lives, to build their focus on their strengths rather than their weaknesses. Many of those things will directly improve your own well-being. And of course PERMA, which really is a shorthand for a dashboard of the way to drive your life, deliberately go and set about having more positive emotion. Make a decision to do so. Check to see whether you've got enough engagement in the work you're doing, the volunteering you're doing, the relationships you have, and what you spend your time doing. Take a check on what the quality of your relationships is. Are you seeing your friends enough, or have you become so busy you don't have time to see them? Good, healthy relationships are really important if you want well-being in your life. Check whether you feel there's a sense of meaning in your life. If you've just moved from full-time work, transitioning to retirement, ask yourself a couple of questions about, well, I might have got quite a lot of my meaning in life provided by my work. What am I going to do now that I'm retiring? And of course, meaning in life can be found in many different ways. It's an authentic engagement with things that make you feel like your life is worth living. So the more a person can take their own, be their own dashboard checker on their own state of psychological health, the more they're going to be directed towards mental health. And of course, it rubs off on the people around you. Suddenly you find yourself having strengths conversations instead of weakness conversations. Suddenly 
you stop being a curmudgeon or a grizzler because in fact being a curmudgeon or a grizzler reduces your positive emotion and you know that positive emotion is going to improve your mental health and by the way your physical health it has really strong impacts on physical health as well so it's a, it's just like slip slop slap when you know that you mustn't go out of the house without a hat and you should use sunscreen this is the same kind of internalised knowledge. When you know that actually your health and other people's health is served by smiling and that actually each small interaction of positive emotion just a few seconds long is doing you good, you start to do it more and it rubs off. So you suddenly have community impact of everybody's moving towards a strengths-based lens on the world instead of a negative lens on the, world, on the world and then the whole community becomes more well. So the value of teaching this knowledge to these concepts of well-being to people, for people to use themselves on themselves and on the people around them creates a network effect and together across the city of Adelaide we could do something really amazing to build the well-being and resilience of this city.